welcome to this video. And in this video, I want to have a look at deriving the Roche limit. So firstly, let's define what the Roche limit is. So this is a limit where you have a smaller object like a moon and a larger object like a planet. And at some distance between the two, the satellite will be tidally pulled apart by the gravitational forces of the planet. So it's no longer able to, to gravitationally hold itself together and the tides from that planet will pull it apart. And there's a set distance that that will occur at depending on the relative densities of the two and the sizes involved. And what we're going to have a look at is deriving an expression to find that distance. But before we do that, there's some pretty good examples in the solar system of where this occurs. So Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 impacted Jupiter in 1994. Now it was a comet, which was a, pretty much a single object traveling through space. When it got too close to Saturn, as it was approaching to impact, it was tidally pulled apart into many pieces, and then those individual pieces impacted Jupiter. But this is what happens when a smaller object gets close enough, you know, within that limit that it's actually pulled apart, and which is a pretty good example. And another one is Saturn's rings. So the edge of Saturn's rings pretty much sits at the Roche limit for water ice. And anything inside that limit, it's not able to hold itself together for its own self-gravity. So you can't have moons inside the rings if they're water ice. And outside of the rings, you're going to have moons. So this limit is pretty much at the edge of the ring system. So it's a good physical representation of that. You can have a go at working out approximately where that is. Now, if we had a different material like rock or something that was a bit denser, then that limit would be closer to the planet. But for water ice, it's kind of at the ring edge. So before we go through the derivation and have a look at how we get there to find this distance, there are a few versions and you can do it for a rigid satellite or a fluid satellite. Now you should note that the fluid version is approximately twice as, well, it would be located twice as far away than the rigid one. And if you think about physically what's happening there, a rigid satellite is able to support itself um, better than the fluid one. So the fluid one would be tidally distorted before the more rigid one. So that's why you've got a difference there. But the one we're going to have a look at in this video is the rigid expression for the Roche limit. Now in, the, in both of them, there's three variables really. The first one is the density of the larger object, the density of the planet. You then have the density of the smaller object, the satellite or the moon. And then you have the radius of the larger object, which is the planet in this case. So let's start off with a planet and a moon. So we've got this larger object, which is the planet, and then the smaller object, which is your satellite or moon. And they have a, a mass of capital M and a mass of lowercase m. And they are separated by some distance. Now, what we need to do is consider the gravitational forces acting on some object U located on the surface of the satellite. And we need to balance some forces to work out where D, they become unbalanced and it's essentially pulled from the surface. So acting on U, you've got a tidal force from the larger object from the planet. And this tidal force is basically the, the difference of the gravitational force acting on you from the planet at the surface and from the center. So the difference in gravitational force between the center and, and the surface is our tidal force. You then have this gravitational force acting um, from the smaller object. So this is from the actual moon itself. This is the gravitational force pulling it down in the opposite direction. So you've got these two forces balancing what each other out. So there we go. We can actually put the equations for both of those there. So we've got the tidal force on the left, and then we've got the gravitational force on the right. Now, since at the Roche limit, both of these forces are equal. So they're balanced when they're at the Roche limit. If it goes within it, then the tidal force is going to win. And if they're outside of it, then the gravitational force is going to be greater. But at the limit, they're equal. So we can basically equate those two to one another. And what we can do there, 
is we can start to rearrange it so we can get an expression for g. So to start off with, we can divide through by g u r. Now what that will do is it remove the gravitational constant, it will remove u, and we remove r from the left hand side. And you can do this a few different ways, but this is one way to do it. We can then multiply through by d cubed, and what that does is it removes the d cubed underneath the 2m on the left hand side and we move it onto the right. Now, if we then divide through by the mass of the satellite, again, we can remove it from the right hand side, and then we end up with it being divide, with dividing the 2m on the other side. Now, we will multiply through by the radius of the satellite cubed. That removes our r cubed from the right hand side and leaves us just with the Roche limit cubed. So we can flip it around actually and take the cube root to both sides and then we have an expression for the Roche limit. Now that final expression there, well it's not necessarily the final one, but it's got the radius of the satellite in there, the mass of the planet and the mass of the satellite. But we don't want the mass, or sorry, the radius of the satellite in this expression. We want to ex exchange it for the radius of the planet instead. So we don't want that satellite radius in there. So what we can do to do that is we can rewrite the mass in terms of density and radius for both of the planet and the satellite. And then we get these expressions here because we know how mass, density and radius or work together, we're assuming that these are spheres. And we can go back to our expression we had before. Now the four pi over three cancels out straight away because it's top and bottom. And we're just left with the density times the radius cubed of both the planet and the satellite. Now we can bring the both the radiuses cubed over one another outside of the brackets and what that will do is it removes the radius of the satellite and we're just left with the radius of the planet instead and then one final thing we can actually do there is we can just approximate it by bringing the two out um, and we're left with this approximation here and this is our final Roche limit for a rigid satellite and you can have a go at calculating certain limits for the planets in our solar system and you can have a go with Saturn and see where you get this limit is compared to the actual ring systems that we know where they are and see how close you can actually get. So thank you for watching and if you enjoyed the video then um, check out some of the other ones.